on my day off, I invited my mother-in-law for a walk since the weather was nice. She agreed immediately, and as we were enjoying a pleasant stroll in the neighborhood park, I received a call from my husband. Oh my god. Mom has apparently collapsed. What? What is he talking about? My mother-in-law is right next to me. Yeah. So, I decided to go back home for a while. I, I see. While I was puzzled, my mother-in-law smiled and said, Keep this a secret, okay? She said it so Adam couldn't hear, placing her finger in front of her lips. I'll be back next Tuesday at the latest. Bye. With that, he hurriedly hung up. What on earth is going on? A few days later, Adam came back. How is your mom doing? Oh, she's not doing very well. He sat on the sofa, looking serious. We might have only a little time left with her. I see. Since then, my mother-in-law and I have been in regular contact, preparing for various things. Unaware of this, Adam mumbled about being troubled and started fiddling with his smartphone, and then... Will you marry me? It's my fifth year in New York, at a three-star restaurant I could never have imagined going to before. I was proposed to by my boyfriend whom I met here. Today is the happiest day of my life. I vowed in my heart to live with him. My name is Mary Holland. I moved to the city after my parents passed away. I've always been aware of my carefree life in the countryside. When I first arrived in New York, I was overwhelmed by the height of the buildings and the number of people, freezing in place for a while. Being a thorough country bumpkin who had never been to a city, I was often at a loss about what to do. In my hometown, locking the door when going out wasn't a habit, and it was normal to receive vegetables from a neighbor, rarely buying them myself. Even working in a company was something I had to get used to, and I made many mistakes at first. Mary, what kind of job did you start with? I worked as a clerk in a commercial company. There weren't many places that would hire a country girl who wasn't a new graduate. While eating the stylishly presented food, my boyfriend, no, my now fiancé Adam and I reminisced about the past. Why did you switch to working at a library? Was it because of your workplace? Well, everyone got along well enough. But the company was incredibly exploitative. Yeah, it must be hard to tell which companies are bad when you first move to New York. Exactly. Back then, I didn't realize it was what people call a black company. I just thought I was being overworked, but that it was normal in the city. It's scary how you can get used to things. At that time, I was willing to work anywhere that would hire me. Having spent most of my money on moving and funeral expenses, I needed to earn quickly. Compared to my hometown, the pay was higher here and trains were frequent, so I thought I wouldn't miss the last train home. But the reality wasn't so kind. The company that finally hired me had me working from the first train in the morning to the last train at night. Lunch break was only 30 minutes, and going out during work was prohibited. I was earning money but had no time to spend it. I genuinely thought this was normal back then. That must have been tough. Why did you decide to become a librarian? I already had a librarian license from the university. But when I moved here, the library was too far, so I gave up. Then I decided to quit and move closer, and managed to get a job at a library. Did something specific make you quit? There was an old lady crouched in front of an eye clinic. I helped her to the station, but then I was late and got scolded badly. 
the stress of the job was taken out on me, and I was yelled at for three hours for things like always being late and dressing sloppily. My boss's face from that time still haunts me. You helped someone, yet you got scolded? Exactly, so I decided that company wasn't for me and handed in my resignation that day. You're very proactive. I respect that. Thanks to that, we met, and I have to be grateful. Yes, I hope that old lady is doing well. Since I changed jobs and started working at the library, my life has changed dramatically. I have proper days off and can take paid leave. The people at work are very kind and taught me everything with patience. The pay is lower than at the prior company, but I'm happy to be surrounded by books I love, feeling a great sense of fulfillment. While working in this wonderful environment, I met Adam, who was looking for a book, and we hit it off. After a few meals together, we started dating. I'm grateful to the books that brought me to Adam. By the way, I want to tell my mom about us. Do you have any free time next Sunday? How about next Sunday? Okay. I'll contact my mom. She's strict, but she's not a bad person. She'll accept you, don't worry. Thank you. Tell me what she likes, okay? Sure, let's go buy something together. Maybe give her a recommended book as a present. That sounds great. We continued chatting while eating the delicious food and drinking wine, maybe a bit too much. But I'll never forget the signed marriage certificate Adam gave me at the end. May these happy days continue forever. Time passed, and today was the day to visit my mother-in-law. I was nervous about meeting her for the first time. I got up earlier than usual and dressed carefully. Welcome, both of you. Thanks for coming all this way. Thanks, Mom. This is my wife, Mary. Nice to meet you. I'm Mary. I may be inexperienced, but I look forward to being part of the family. At the entrance stood a kind-looking woman who quickly told me to lift my head and guided us inside. After some casual chat about where I'm from and my hobbies, she suddenly asked, So, Mary, what do you do for work? The atmosphere changed slightly. She works as a clerk at a library. At a library, I see. Is something wrong? No. It's not bad, but… I noticed Maya's face cloud a little. I didn't expect to be questioned about my job, so my hands started sweating. I'll be honest, Mary. New York is a bit expensive, isn't it? I'm worried about the financial aspect. Do you really want to keep that job? She said this apologetically but sharply. I understood her concern. Thinking about the future, it's natural to want a daughter-in-law who earns a lot. But I answered firmly. Yes, I don't intend to change it. I felt that if I didn't convey my thoughts to Maya now, I would never be able to call her my mother-in-law. I was scared, but I believed Adam's mother would eventually accept me. So. I responded confidently. I used to work for a horrible company, but I changed jobs and became a librarian. I believe this job, which makes people happy through books, is truly fulfilling. I've never had such a rewarding job before. That's right, Mom. Mary and I met at the library where she works. Books brought us together. I earn enough money so you don't have to worry. Adam also agrees with my opinion and supports me. I'm very proud of this job. If we ever run short on money, 
I'm willing to take on part-time work or whatever it takes. That's how much I want to continue this job. I spoke my mind with a slightly firm tone, but I expressed my current thoughts boldly. Maya had a difficult expression but nodded deeply. I see, Mary. I raised Adam on my own after losing my husband. I can't let go easily. So, I want you to prove gradually that you are a respectable person. Of course, Maya. I responded loudly with a smile. The tension that had filled the room suddenly eased, and normal conversation began. Finally, both Adam and I relaxed our shoulders and felt relieved. The more we talked, the more it became clear that Maya was a family-oriented person. Although she lives in the neighboring prefecture and won't be living with us, I decided to build a good relationship with her. Fifteen years later, as promised, I still visit my mother-in-law's house regularly. At first, she seemed strict, but each time I brought her a book, she joyfully shared her thoughts on it. Eventually, we started holding regular tea parties and book discussions. For a book lover like me, it was the perfect break and a great way to bond with my mother-in-law, killing two birds with one stone. I have to thank Adam for suggesting I recommend books to her. However, I haven't been able to talk much with Adam recently. At first, our married life was like a dream come true. Adam, kind and considerate, was the ideal husband who helped me forget the loneliness of losing my parents. He helped with the housework and even surprised me with bouquets on special occasions. Every day was filled with happiness, but in the past few years, that happiness has faded. It's only natural that the initial excitement would wear off after many years, but Adam's sloppiness has become more noticeable. He used to help with the laundry, but now he leaves it to me. He doesn't even put his clothes in the washing machine anymore, and his socks are always inside out. When I point this out, he complains, it's a hassle. If you don't like it, do it yourself. He stopped cleaning up after himself, ignored the doctor's advice about his diet, and started criticizing the healthy meals I made for him. Hey, Adam. Don't you think you're being a bit cold? Today, too, I sighed at the leftover food on his plate. The menu was designed to address his iron and calcium deficiencies. He used to compliment me on my cooking. Is that so? You're coming home late and leaving your meals unfinished. What are you trying to say? Do you think of me as a servant or something? I lowered my voice a bit and asked. In the early days, he used to say that it was natural for a married couple to share housework, but now he does nothing. If I didn't make dinner, he would get angry and leave. The stress of doing housework while trying to keep Adam happy was building up. I've had enough. I don't think of you like that. Then what about your recent behavior? I'm not just a convenient woman. You think I see you that way? I'm disappointed. I thought I was showing you love, but if you don't see it, fine. Love? I don't feel any of it. You should be grateful for my salary, allowing us to live in this nice house. Stop complaining. With that, Adam went back to his room. I knelt on the spot, taking deep breaths to calm the rising emotions. Such incidents had become a daily occurrence. Whenever I pointed out something, he would twist the conversation to make it seem like I was at fault. We no longer shared the same bed. I swallowed the words it's painful that were about to escape my throat and began cleaning up the leftover food. I wished that my feelings would wash away with the running water. A few days later. It's a weekday, 
But the library is closed, so I have the day off. The weather is nice, so I decided to visit my mother-in-law and invite her for a walk. She readily agreed, and as we walked through a nearby park, enjoying the pleasant sunlight, I received a call from Adam. It's terrible, Mary. Mom has collapsed. What? What is Adam talking about? She is right here next to me. Yeah, so I'm going to stay at her house for a while to keep an eye on her. I see. While I was confused, my mother-in-law smiled and said, Keep it a secret that I'm here. She put her index finger to her lips, signaling me to be quiet. I almost let out a sound of surprise. Mary, you don't need to worry. I'll take care of it. You don't need to call or anything, it might stress mom out. Okay. But don't you have work? Mom's emergency takes priority. Of course, I'm taking time off. When will you be back? I'll be back by Tuesday night. Bye. With that, Adam hurriedly ended the call. I gripped my smartphone and stared at the ground. My mother-in-law gently held my hand. I'm sorry, Mary. Leave the rest to me. My heart was pounding loudly, but her words calmed me down a bit, and I went home as she instructed. After that, my mother-in-law and I kept in touch regularly and started making various preparations. On Tuesday night, as promised, Adam came home. I'm back. Welcome back. How was your mom? Not too good. I'll need to visit her occasionally, so I might not be home often. Really? That serious? Adam sat on the sofa with a grave expression. I exaggerated my surprise. Yeah, I want to cherish the remaining time with her. Do you understand? Of course. Actually, I'll go too. No, I want it to be just the two of us. It's our last bit of parent-child time. And remember, mom didn't think highly of you at first. That's... My voice trembled. Adam muttered. What a bother, and picked up his smartphone. Unable to hold it in anymore, I clutched my stomach and burst out laughing. Haha, <laughs> Adam, you're the best. Ha! Huh. What's wrong with you, Mary? How can you laugh when my mother is critically ill? He threw his smartphone aside and approached me with an angry face. I stopped him with my hand and opened the door to the adjacent room. Who's critically ill? Ha! Huh. Mom! Why? My mother-in-law herself appeared. Adam was so shocked that his face turned pale. On the contrary, my mother-in-law approached Adam with a fierce expression. What have you been doing this past week? What? As you can see, I'm perfectly healthy. What were you doing? That is. Adam averted his eyes and hesitated. Of course, he couldn't lie anymore with his perfectly healthy mother standing in front of him. Mary, did you call her? I told you not to because it would stress her out. Unable to find any excuse. Adam turned his anger towards me. But with the upper hand, I wasn't afraid. Adam, when you called, I was on a walk with my mother-in-law. I showed Adam my chat history with my mother-in-law. It clearly showed our conversation when I invited her for a walk on the library's day off, and she gladly accepted. So, it was obvious from the start that you were lying. But why? You two weren't that close. 
At first, she complained about your low salary. That was just to test Mary. Huh. Despite what I said, Mary kept bringing me recommended books and inviting me out. Unlike you, who never visited. My mother-in-law spoke with an exasperated tone, and Adam tried to argue. I didn't know. Why didn't you tell me? I tried at first, but you stopped listening. Initially, I had no intention of hiding it, but Adam's refusal to communicate had backfired on him. If he had known about our good relationship, this wouldn't have happened. Adam looked down in frustration. His smartphone vibrated, but he was too exhausted to care. Do you remember when I told you about helping an old lady in front of an eye clinic while I was working at a company? That was the trigger for my career change. I think I remember. That was me. The world is a small place, isn't it? Yes, this was the most significant event that brought me closer to my mother-in-law. While reminiscing about the past during a tea party, she suddenly exclaimed loudly. That was me. She opened her eyes wide, looking surprised. At that time, she was suffering from a complex eye disease and had come to the city for surgery. However, after the operation, she got lost and was in despair when someone called out to her. Due to the postoperative eye drops, her vision was still blurry, so she couldn't see the person's face. Therefore, she didn't recognize me by my face, but she became certain after hearing my story. I'm so happy to have met the person who helped me again. Thanks to that, we've become very close. I was too exhausted at that time to remember faces properly, so I didn't realize it. I've been wondering if you made it home safely ever since. Thanks to you, I did. Although now my son seems to think I look like a patient who doesn't have long to live. Maybe you should be the one getting eye surgery next time. Adam usually tries to assert dominance over me, but he seems to stand no chance against his real mother. He opened his mouth, seemingly wanting to say something, but no sound came out. Then, the door leading to the adjacent room opened again, and I heard a woman's voice calling Adam. Ha, huh, Iona. Good evening, it's been since yesterday. Iona smiled sadly and faced Adam. She was slightly younger than me, with a well-defined face, a delicate frame, and a floral dress that suited her well. Seeing her slightly trembling shoulders evoked a protective instinct. I could somewhat understand why Adam fell for her. Why are you here, Iona? When I got home after we said goodbye yesterday, these people were there. They told me everything. You're married, aren't you? How did you? I hired a detective agency to investigate everything over the past week. A week ago, right after I hung up the phone with Adam, my mother-in-law sent me home and went straight to the detective agency. She didn't care about the cost and urgently requested an investigation into her son's affair. As a result, evidence was quickly gathered, and they identified Iona's home and made contact. Adam, you got along well with my parents, didn't you? They are very angry, and of course, so am I. I brought them here today to settle things. According to the investigation, Iona worked at a client company, and she told us they fell in love at first sight. She hadn't known Adam was married, and if she had, she never would have dated him. Her parents, who had been considering marriage, were furious upon learning the truth about Adam. They sincerely apologized to me, despite not being at fault, which made me feel both guilty and even angrier at Adam. That's why I apologized to the three of them and suggested they come here today. So, Adam, your affair is completely exposed. 
I'll give you my lawyer's contact information later. You'll go through them from now on. How do you plan to live without me? Prices have skyrocketed compared to before. You can't survive on your salary alone. Adam glared at me, half defiantly. My mother-in-law stepped in to block Adam's view of me. Actually, I've started something new. With that, she showed Adam a screen on her smartphone. What is this? Recently, I started investing in real estate. It's been extremely profitable. The money spent on the detective agency didn't hurt at all. The screen showed a rate graph. My mother-in-law, who had been studying investment, had succeeded greatly in these investments. Of course, I also helped by applying what I learned from university and my favorite books. We were likely earning far more than Adam's salary now. So, you don't need to worry about our money. You should be more concerned about your own financial situation, as you'll soon be paying alimony and living a poor life. What? Alimony, you're joking, right? No, it's only natural since you had an affair. You'll be paying for both me and Iona. Adam, looking deflated, suddenly seemed to get an idea, grinning smugly as he pointed at me. Ha! Huh. Too bad, Mary. I have my mother's inheritance. Sure, I'll pay the alimony, but I'll be back to my old life in no time. Uh, how did you end up so foolish? Seeing Adam's triumphant declaration, my mother-in-law looked exasperated and held her head. I felt the same. Mom, it's a major crisis for your precious son. Please. Adam, you are indeed my precious son. But I never raised you to do such inhumane things. What? I'm disowning you. From now on, live on your own. No way. What about the inheritance? I'm giving it to Mary. I couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. I knew she was considering disowning him, but she had never mentioned the inheritance. I was overwhelmed with joy, as someone who lost her parents, to be valued so much. Mary, would you like to become my real daughter? Those words made me feel a rush of warmth. They were words I had longed to hear. I've been lonely since my parents died. Are you sure? Of course. Let's take care of each other from now on. My mother-in-law, no, my mother opened her arms toward me, and I jumped in without hesitation. Ah, the warmth of a mother after so long. Today might be the worst day of my life, but it's also the best day of my life. Seeing us, Adam yelled, that's a lie, in anger. So, Mary, this was your plan all along. You got close to me for my mother's inheritance and deceived her. Adam turned red with rage, but I calmly replied, you reap what you sow. I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. From now on, I would live freely with my mother. By the way, this has been buzzing non-stop. Iona handed Adam his vibrating smartphone. As Adam answered it in frustration, a man's angry voice shouted, You're fired. Trouble with a client. Marriage fraud. This must be a mistake. A pale Adam desperately tried to explain but was cut off. He stood there helplessly, with only a smiling Iona in front of him. Iona, you're on my side, right? Adam reached out to her like praying to a god, but she brushed him off. Adam, I once married a terrible man and got divorced. I truly thought I could be happy this time. Iona. But you were the same. I reported it to the company. 
goodbye. With that, Iona headed for the door, and my mother followed. I handed the completed divorce papers to Adam and left the house. After that, Adam surprisingly agreed to the divorce easily. We received alimony, and my mother and I moved to an apartment to avoid Adam's intrusion. According to rumors, Adam struggled to find a new job. We had spread his bad reputation, making it difficult for him to get another job in the same industry. He was probably living a poor life by now. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Mary. It's such a nice day. Shall we have a picnic at that big park today? Sounds great. Let's make some sandwiches and bring them. I lived peacefully with my mother in our apartment. We went to the library to study real estate investment together, spent weekends going out, sharing book reviews, and enjoying a leisurely time. Our investments continued to succeed, and my mother's savings kept growing. Spending time with my beloved books and my beloved mother, I was happy. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. My husband who was on an overseas assignment was going to temporarily return home, and we decided to have a dinner party at the house where our son's family, who I live with, resides. We were having a pleasant conversation in a friendly atmosphere when our grandson, Daniel, suddenly changed the situation with a single remark. Today isn't grandma's punishment day, so you can eat, right? Despite my best efforts to keep it together, I couldn't believe it was all ruined by a single word from my grandson. I was stunned and could only look down in silence. My son and his wife tried to cover it up in a panic, but the more they talked, the more Daniel revealed the truth. In her fluster, Kyla finally snapped. Enough. Just be quiet for a bit. She yelled at Daniel, making him cry. Then. Don't just yell at a child. Nelson's raised voice turned the dinner party atmosphere tense in an instant. Amid the silence of the living room, broken only by Daniel sobbing, Nelson demanded an explanation from Caden. All the while, I was hugging Daniel, comforting him. In my arms, Daniel said, I'm sorry, Grandma. Will you get scolded again because of me? He was worried for me. What should I do now? I could only stay silent, holding Daniel tightly. I am Elizabeth Pratt, a housewife in my 60s. Nelson and I fell in love while working at the same company, so it was really tough until we decided to get married and I quit my job. In those days, without phones, it wasn't easy to exchange contact information, and there was a general attitude of keeping workplace romances secret. So, until we got engaged, I was always on edge, worried that my boss might find out. Even after our engagement, we struggled with seating arrangements and speeches for the wedding, to the point where I didn't know who the wedding was for anymore. Moreover, any slip-up could lead to Nelson, who stayed with the company, being subject to snide remarks later, so we couldn't afford to relax. However, thanks to those struggles, we are now bound by a strong bond. I realized this especially when Nelson's overseas assignment was decided, leading to us living apart. Three months before his departure. I think I can come back within three years, but I'm worried. Why don't you come with me? I appreciate the thought, but at my age, moving overseas is too much. Unlike you, I can only speak English. Nelson was always worried about leaving me alone in America. Besides, if anything happens, Caden and his family are here, and we can always talk on the phone, 
So don't worry too much. Yeah, you're right. Caden is our only son. Fourteen years ago, when Caden started university, he moved out to live on his own. After graduation, he met Kyla in the cafeteria at his workplace, and they got married seven years ago. Two years after their marriage, our grandson Daniel was born. Caden, who rarely came home when he was single, started visiting regularly after Daniel was born. Both Nelson and I always look forward to seeing Caden's family. But beyond that, our time as a couple was very peaceful and enjoyable. Especially, Nelson planning trips for us during his long holidays made me happy. I've been busy with work and left everything at home to you. From now on, let's spend more time together as a couple. He would always take me to the places I wanted to go. For us, this was the first time Nelson had to live alone for work. Moreover, since it was overseas, returning home wouldn't be easy. It was understandable that Nelson was worried. However, if anything happened, Caden's family, living just 15 minutes away from the nearest bus stop, could help. So I always reassured Nelson that there was no need to worry. About a month and a half before Nelson's departure, I injured my back and had to go to the hospital. It was a mild case of a herniated disc, so I could manage going to the hospital and maintaining minimal daily activities on my own. However, to Nelson, who was about to leave, it was a major concern, and he said he would delay his departure until my back healed. I appreciate the thought, but it's not something that should delay your work. But I can't leave you alone like this. What if something happens? I tried to reassure him, but Nelson was adamant about not leaving me alone. Days passed with our discussions going nowhere. We're both adults, so don't worry about something like this. If anything happens, Caden and his family will help. As usual, I was trying to convince Nelson. Then, he had a flash of inspiration and said, Caden. That's it. Let's ask if you can live with Caden. Ha. Huh. Nelson immediately called Caden, and explained my back situation and his overseas assignment. After hearing the story, Caden said, I understand. I'll talk to Kyla, so give me a moment. He then hung up. I thought it was impossible for them to agree to such a sudden request to live together. However, Caden's answer was completely opposite to my expectations. Kyla agrees too. It's only for about three years, right? That's no problem at all. I see. That's a relief. We should thank Kyla soon. Caden, take care of your mom. So, I ended up living with Caden's family, pushed by Nelson. Caden's wife, Kyla, worked as a chef in the same company cafeteria where she met Caden. A year ago, they opened their dream restaurant and both worked hard together. I'm sorry for asking you to take care of me when you're so busy with the new restaurant. A few days after deciding to live together, we had a dinner with Caden's family. While Nelson and Caden were chatting and drinking, I quietly apologized to Kyla. I thought it must be a burden for Kyla to take care of an injured mother-in-law for three years, especially at such an important time for her restaurant. However, Kyla said, Don't worry about it. We help each other in times of need. Also, once you feel better, could you occasionally look after Daniel? Kyla asked me, He's in daycare, but he's always alone from evening to night. 
Seeing Kyla's apologetic expression, I understood why she agreed to live together. She probably wanted me to look after Daniel. Of course. If there's anything else I can do, don't hesitate to ask. I replied with a smile, and Kyla also smiled, relieved. I was truly relieved that I wasn't just a burden. Living with Caden's family was more peaceful and comfortable than I had expected. Not only did they accept me willingly, but they also provided me with a room of my own since they had an unused one. Wanting to be of help to Caden's family, I started doing the laundry, washing dishes, and picking up Daniel from daycare. I also began cooking dinner in place of Kyla, who often worked late due to preparations for the next day. Caden and Kyla always expressed their gratitude, and I could spend all my time with my adorable grandson. Although this cohabitation started on Nelson's sudden whim, I was truly happy and spent each day grateful to my husband and son. However, this happy time did not last long. The trigger was an innocent comment Daniel made during dinner. I like grandma's food better than mom's. Oh dear, thank you. There was no way my simple home cooking could surpass a professional chef, but to Daniel, who had parents running a healthy restaurant, my American-style cooking might have seemed delicious. Additionally, Daniel proudly mentioned that he could eat vegetables he usually disliked if I cooked them. I praised Daniel, telling him he was amazing. To be honest, Daniel's likes and dislikes were very similar to Caden's when he was a child. So, I just made the dishes that Caden liked, and by coincidence, Daniel ate them too. However, this seemed to have struck a nerve with Kyla. If you like grandma's cooking so much, why don't you have her cook for you every day from now on? Kyla's expression was calm but her tone clearly indicated she was angry. Both Caden and I sensed that saying anything unnecessary would be unwise and continued eating in silence. However, five-year-old Daniel didn't notice this and said, Really? Yay. I get grandma's food every day. He was overjoyed. Seeing Daniel's reaction only made Kyla's mood worse. Since then, I started preparing all meals for Caden's family. Being a housewife, cooking was no burden at all. The problem was that Kyla's gaze became increasingly sharp as she watched Daniel and Caden enjoying my food. Moreover, Daniel began to call for me for everything. Bath time, reading stories, getting dressed, drawing, bedtime. No matter what it was, he called for me. I responded happily because I loved my grandson, but Kyla might have felt as if her child was being taken away. Elizabeth, please don't spoil Daniel. This is why old people are annoying. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be careful. Before I knew it, Kyla's attitude towards me had become cold and filled with resentment. For months after my husband went overseas, Kyla came to me with a proposal. From today, in lieu of rent, you will do all the household chores. When I asked why she suddenly said this, Kyla explained that it was unfair to provide food and utilities for an additional adult for three years without compensation. She wanted me to repay this inconvenience through labor. Your back pain is healed, right? Then from now on, work properly. Her cold gaze and matter-of-fact tone left me speechless. Was this really the same Kyla I knew before living together? Though I was terrified by how much she had changed, I decided to comply silently. After all, she had a point. Expenses had increased with one more adult in the house. 
I understood her desire to offset this through chores. I resolved to be more considerate of Kyla and reduce her burden. By doing so, I hoped she would calm down and things would return to how they were. At that time, I genuinely believed that with effort, we could restore our good relationship. However, this hope was soon shattered. When I folded the laundry, I was scolded for doing it poorly. When I washed the dishes, I was berated for doing it badly. When Daniel showed affection towards me, I was accused of bribing him with food to win his favor. No matter how hard I tried to be considerate, it only seemed to provoke Kyla more. Still, I continued to handle household chores for the sake of my son and his family. The only solace I found was that Daniel and Caden enjoyed my cooking and finished their meals. However, even this soon became a problem. What's so great about this old-fashioned home cooking? It's bland, unattractive, and inedible. After saying this, Kyla would head to the kitchen, cook a meal for herself, and eat alone. The atmosphere at the dinner table was icy, as if we had seen a ghost. I was too scared to move, fearing what harsh words Kyla would say next. Daniel, sensing the tension, lost his appetite and left his meal unfinished. When dinner ended and I stood up to clear the dishes, Kyla called out in a cold, low voice. Elizabeth sit down for a moment. Dreading the reprimand, I sat back down and cautiously looked at Kyla's face, which was more hostile than ever. I'm a professional. When I cook, it incurs a cost. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. I forced out a response. Since you made me cook outside of work, you need to be punished. The word punished sent a chill down my spine. What more could she do when I was already feeling so broken? With my fingers growing cold and clammy with sweat, I waited for her words. Kyla twisted her mouth into a sneer and said, no food for you tomorrow, before leaving the living room. I was momentarily stunned by the lack of insults or verbal abuse. Is this really all? I had never experienced such a light punishment, which made it all the more frightening. The next day, when I actually went without food, I quickly understood the severity of this punishment. Even when I felt faint with hunger, I wasn't allowed to rest from household chores. Moreover. I still had to prepare meals for Caden's family, my stomach constantly rumbling. Running errands became a battle against fainting from hunger. I began to think that enduring her insults at home was far better than this. Such punishment occurred three times a week. Caden, who could have been my only ally, was too busy appeasing Kyla to be of any help. In fact, he had recently started joining Kyla in berating and exploiting me. The only consolation I had was my grandson Daniel, but even that was restricted since Kyla would scold him if she saw him being kind to me. I had to limit my interactions with Daniel to the bare minimum. The room that was meant for me had turned into a storage space, leaving no place to stretch out and sleep. I had become less than a burden. I often thought of returning to my home to escape this treatment. But the thought of my husband worrying about me overseas kept me from acting on it. At most, it would be three years. If I could endure, everything would be fine. Living in constant fear of Kyla's anger, I continued my hollow existence. A little over a year after my husband went overseas. One day he called. Hi, Caden. It's sudden, but I'll be back next week for a short visit. 
How about we all go out for dinner? Next week. That's too sudden. How about we have dinner at our place instead? Sure, that sounds good. By the way, how's mom? Every time I call, I'm told she's busy with Daniel, so we hardly talk. Yeah, she's fine. We'll see you next week then. Caden ended the call abruptly. At dinner, he shared the news with Kyla and me. Kyla looked visibly annoyed, but I was secretly overjoyed. Since my husband went overseas, he had only called a few times in the early months. I thought he was too busy to call, but I had been very lonely. On top of that, Kyla forbade me from calling him, so I could only wait for his calls. I worried about whether he had any injuries or illnesses, or if he was overworked. Next week, I could finally confirm these worries. I felt a surge of life returns to me. However, seeing my excitement, Kyla became furious. What's with that happy face? Are you implying I'm the bad guy here? What? No, I never said that. Shut up. Don't talk back. You're being punished again today. Confused and upset, I was denied food once again. For the week leading up to my husband's visit, on top of household chores, I was forced to help with the restaurant's preparations and distribute heavy flyers. Don't come back until you've handed out all the flyers. She would kick me out of the house. The treatment was harsher than ever, and I was on the verge of collapse daily. What had I done to anger her so much? Too tired and hungry to figure it out, I spent each day even more careful around Kyla. Finally, the day of the meal with my husband arrived. I prepared his favorite dishes and waited for him at the entrance. Elizabeth. I missed you. You've lost weight and look pale. That's not true. You look exhausted too. His sharp observation made me nervous. The past week had been so punishing that I was truly on the brink of collapse. But I tried to hide my poor condition so as not to worry him. Still, my husband's concern deepened as he continued questioning. I've been calling regularly, but you never answer. Has something happened here? What? Regularly? Since when? Since I went overseas, I've called twice a month. I was always told you were busy with Daniel. I had no idea he had been calling so frequently. As I stood there in shock, Caden and Kyla emerged from the house. They greeted my husband with smiles and led him to the living room. Daniel, waiting there, excitedly ran to my husband, who was delighted to see his grandson after more than a year. This heartwarming scene made me momentarily forget our conversation at the entrance. Soon, Kyla announced the start of the meal. As everyone took their seats around the table, enjoying the cheerful atmosphere, I found myself standing alone a little distance away, out of habit. Noticing this, Kyra called out to me in a flustered tone. Elizabeth, what are you doing? Please sit down quickly. Startled, I hurried to sit down. My husband watched this scene with a curious expression. If I make another mistake, I might suffer more severe punishment later. With that thought in mind, I decided to focus on assisting my husband by serving food and drinks. Thanks to this, the meal continued peacefully without any further incidents. Just as I began to feel relieved, Daniel, my grandson, remembered something and spoke up. 
Hey, Grandma doesn't have punishment today, right? It's good she can eat. Daniel's cheerful smile caused Kyra and Caden to turn pale, their hands and shoulders trembling, their eyes darting nervously. Anyone could see something was wrong, but they forced smiles and desperately tried to cover up Daniel's words. The more they talked, the more Daniel, oblivious to the situation, kept speaking the truth. Panicking, Kyra finally snapped. Just be quiet for a bit. She yelled, causing Daniel to burst into tears. Seeing this, my husband raised his voice in anger. Don't shout at the child like that. The pleasant meal instantly turned tense. In the now silent living room, only Daniel's crying could be heard. My husband, with a voice lower and heavier than I had ever heard, demanded an explanation from Caden. I spoke to Elizabeth earlier, and she said she didn't know about the bi-monthly calls. What's going on? Uh, well, that is. I mean. Facing his father's stern demeanor for the first time, Caden was visibly shaken. My husband's persistent questioning led Caden to confess everything about their treatment of me. Throughout this, I held and comforted Daniel. Despite fearing more scolding from Kyra later, I couldn't leave my sobbing grandson. Sorry, Grandma. Will you get scolded because of me? I gently stroked Daniel's head. Don't worry. Daniel, you did nothing wrong. I reassured him as best as I could. After about ten minutes of questioning, my husband, overwhelmed with disappointment, buried his head in his hands. Discovering that his son and daughter-in-law had been mistreating his wife was hard to believe. Adding to his distress was the fact that he had proposed the cohabitation and had supported the restaurant's opening. The shock was immense. I trusted you both, which is why I supported Elizabeth living with you and helped with the restaurant funds. What were you thinking? After pondering for a while. My husband suggested ending the cohabitation. He also demanded the immediate return of all the living expenses he had sent during this period. Hearing this, I was shocked. What? Wait a minute. What living expenses? You didn't know about that either. Seeing me shake my head. My husband looked even more dejected and glared at Caden and Kyra. According to him, when the cohabitation was arranged, it was agreed that he would send $300 monthly for my living expenses. Caden was supposed to inform me about this arrangement later. But I had never heard anything about the remittance. Instead, I had been told to work to cover living costs and had been treated like a servant. Upon learning this, my husband, in a steady and grave voice, demanded Caden return all the money. All of it. The restaurant funds and the living expenses, return everything. Hearing this, Caden and Kyra turned pale and began apologizing, even bowing down to my husband. Kyra explained that despite two years since opening, the restaurant had been struggling which fueled their resentment toward me for living comfortably with Daniel. Caden admitted to keeping the remittance for themselves and preventing my husband's calls to hide their actions. Although they apologized and promised to change, my husband's anger did not abate. He took me back to my family home and, during his short stay, retrieved all the money he had given Caden and Kyra. Before his departure, he arranged for me to stay at a business hotel, ensuring my safety until he could return from overseas. I'll arrange to come back to the U.S. soon. The hotel staff will keep you safe until then. Though I felt staying at home was enough, I agreed, not wanting to worry him further. Hotel life proved to be comfortable, 
and my health and spirits improved remarkably. In less than a month, my husband returned. The hotel bill was staggering, but he was relieved to see me looking healthier. I felt profoundly grateful to have such a caring husband. Back home, Caden and Kyra frequently visited, pleading for more financial support. However, the trust once broken could not be restored. Their restaurant, struggling even more, eventually closed within two and a half years. Their dreams shattered, and their marriage fell apart. Kyra left, taking only her belongings, leaving Caden with their son, Daniel. Caden, now burdened with debt and child-rearing, turned his life around, finding a new job and working hard. To support him, I began caring for Daniel again. Though we provided no financial help, I took care of Daniel when Caden worked late. Daniel, soon to be a primary school student, proudly showed off his new backpack. Look at this backpack. It's so cool with this gold part. Thank you, Grandpa and Grandma. Watching Daniel, full of pride, always brought me joy. My husband and I look forward to supporting Daniel and hope Caden finds a kind and compassionate partner. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.